Today we have a pair of World War II boots in the shop. Or are they? Honestly, after doing some research, I think they may be an imposter. Now what we're going to do is go ahead and restore these boots to the way that the customer wants them. And then at the end of the video, we're going to talk about why I think these boots potentially are an imposter. Let's go. You know what's cool? Wood pegs. You don't see a lot of shoes where the, uh, the, the back of the heel is still held on by wood pegs. So here's just a piece of leather. It fills the uh, the void kind of like cork does, but this thing hadn't seen light since uh, World War II era. All right, first of all, apologies for the mm, humming noise. On the other side of this wall, we actually share, if you don't know, we share the space where we actually manufacture part of our Southern Polish sandals. So that is the clicker press and they're just stamping out leather. So as far as the boots, let me show you what's going on. All right, so these soles are actually carved insole. You see this on a lot of shoes that are pre-World War II and then gimming really comes about in the 50s. Uh, but what it is is the leather is cut and flipped up and then they put a piece of canvas almost like gimming behind it just to reinforce it That's a good thing because this leather is brittle and it's going to need a fresh piece off canvas What do you think about that brand? Smiley face. All right, so we got knee deep into these things. We started welting them. These things are old and that insole, even with that reinforcement, it wasn't holding up. It started to crumble, disintegrate, and we said, all right, cut it all back off. We're gonna have to create new insoles. Now, this guy, I believe he actually wants to wear these. So we have got some new leather. We put the stamps like the original back in the same place. And then we're going to create us a new feather on this uh, or a new channel. And then we're gonna put these in the boots. These will hold for a long time.
All right, so you remember seeing the little canvas strip around here? The wall that they created on the original insole was paper thin, and so they needed that one as a reinforcement. When I cut this one, I cut it a little bit thicker, so the leather is gonna be stronger than the canvas anyways, and um, that wall is much stronger than the original wall, so that's why I didn't put another piece of canvas in here. It'll hold. All right, so there is a little bit of cavity here. Traditionally, well, we say nowadays, we would put cork in there, they did not have cork. They had a leather piece, uh, a little piece of scrap leather, which you see in a lot of like cowboy boots today. We didn't trust that this wouldn't come un unglued and cause a popping noise. So we created a fresh one out of fresh leather. We're going to replace it as well. All right, so we want to put some stamps on the bottom of these soles like the originals. We don't have the original font and stamps and all that, but we still want to put the same information back on there. So we've got some stamps, not exactly, close enough. Looks easy, stitching through thick stuff like this. I'm, I'm sweating here. All right, so we put some stacked leather um, blocks on here and this is the original top lift. That is the top lift that goes with this particular sole. You can see it's only about half the thickness of what we're gonna put on. So we actually can't use the full thickness of the original block. The block has to get thinner because this gets thicker. But we are gonna use some old cut iron nails like the original to hold these leather stacks on. We have resold this pair of boots. Now, last thing that we're going to do is we really need to hydrate this leather. Now, again, these boots are 80 years old this year, as a matter of fact, and you can tell the leather is really brittle in a lot of spots. So we're really going to saturate these with some conditioner and then add a little shoe cream on there just to bring back the spots where the color's missing. And I think these boots will be ready to go. So let's go ahead and start with that process.
Okay, I'm gonna add a little leather lotion onto this leather again. It just really needs to be hydrated and it's gonna take even more than this. But let's start with the first coat. Okay, we want to make sure we get down in all the little creases because every part of it needs to be hydrated. So at the beginning of the video, I mentioned that I believe this pair of boots that was sent to us is an imposter. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, after looking at it and after having spoken to some people that are a little more versed in this area, let me show you some things that I think just don't add up. So when I got these boots in the shop, I started looking and there were just little things that sort of jumped out at me. Now for one, if you'll notice, this little hole here is covered up by this piece of leather. And it's like that on the other side as well. Now also, one of the other things is just the stitching that was done along here and on the other side. It doesn't exactly have clean lines and it looks just a little, I don't know, sketchy in the way that it was done. Now, Heath and I absolutely love World War II and just the history behind it, but we are not experts when it comes to the actual gear that was issued to the soldiers, the flyers, and whatnot during that period. So, in order to get some more information and better context on this pair of boots, I reached out to a gentleman that I am a huge fan of, and that channel is called World War Wisdom. Now guys, if you haven't checked out this channel, definitely make sure you do so. He does a phenomenal job covering World War II and a lot of the standard issue gear that those folks would have received. So according to the gentleman from World War Wisdom, what he said is this pair of boots right here, which would have been a World War II Type II boot, don't quote me on that, is something like this. Now this we happen to have in the shop. And this is more along the lines of what would have been issued during World War II at some period. This boot is exactly the same, but it did not come with the dual straps. So this would have actually come on a pair of boots. The one with the dual strap would have actually come on another pair of boots that did not have a cap toe, and the bottom portion of the boot would have been new buck or some sort of suede. This is smooth leather, and these two do not match. Now, during World War II, they did have a buckle boot like this, a dual buckle boot, but from what I was told, the dual buckle boot would have had a rough out leather on the bottom and a smooth double buckle like up here. It would not have been smooth and smooth like this type, especially with a cap toe because the dual buckle boot back then did not come with a cap toe. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, this pair of boots more than likely was this type of boot and someone at some point in the past 80 years took the dual buckle off of the old, a uh, different type of boot, attached it to this one in order to make it a little something that they wanted customized. And that is my case. Okay, this pair of World War II-ish boots has been completed. 
But hey, as always, just a couple of quick reminders, guys. Go check us out at southernpolished.com. For those of you that don't know, we do have a flip-flop company called Southern Polished. And uh, yeah, they're made here in Tennessee. So definitely go check them out down below. A lot of you guys are going on cruises and Black Friday's right around the corner and Christmas and whatnot. Go check us out. And also, if you want to send your shoes or boots to us, that's potterandsons.com. Check us out below. All right. Tell us what else we found on this pair of boots. Okay, so it's sometimes the obvious answer is sitting right in front of you. And after we did this wrap up, I'm like, oh my gosh, check this out. So we said, are they original? Did this part belong to this part? No, they did not. And the reason why is because I was looking at the canvas portion, but on the leather side right here, it is stamped an eight and a half D. And the original soles were stamped uh, six and a, a six and a half A, small foot back then. Yeah. Uh, but these were made at the Boston Depot, February 15th, 1944. So just a interesting thing. Oh, and also, don't know if you can see it, but we did stamp the bottom of the soles with the originals did, and they look pretty cool. We actually did the same thing to the insoles as well. Mm -hmm. Just a little extra touch that we wanted to do. And uh, yeah, they're not all perfectly symmetrical because the original actually had some stamps on top of the other stamp. These were mass produced and they were just wham, wham, wham through these stamping machines. So yeah. I wanted to make it a little bit kind of, we say like disorganized, like the originals would. So, eh. yeah. so a big shout out again to World War Wisdom. He was correct. He, mm -hmm. he and I texted back and forth and he did say, I just, you know. It could have been a battlefield uh, adjustment, you know, find a cobbler who could add this on there to keep the uh, the junk from getting into his boots, having those kind of gaiters on there. And like you said before, after the war, yeah. there were so many depots or what do you call those? Army, surplus. Navy surplus stores that somebody was probably like, hey, I'm going to take a pair of these, take them off. I admired them during the war. I want them on my boots. Now I'm going to use them for the yard work. Who knows? That is what happened to this pair of boots. But outside of that, this gentleman just wanted new soles and heels on here. Um, he wanted the combos that kind of had that original look. Yeah. Which so it had that good. rubber, thick rubber front portion. And then, as I said, we had to decrease the stack to accommodate such a thick, uh, but it looks pretty good. We even did the little good. nail pattern on here and around the toe. It looks like a modern day Vibram slash Boston Depot issued boot. Yeah. So there you have it. Hope you all enjoyed it. Leave us a comment down below what you thought the whole time. And uh, hey, if you're enjoying the old boots, then let us know down below. Maybe we'll try to get more of them and, and do more of this type of thing. So thanks again for watching. And until next time, y'all have a good one.